hello guys welcome to my channel my name is Tammy Tayo today's video is about how to draft a simple basic bodice pattern keep on watching and let's get started so these are the materials needed to draft your basic bodice pattern so the first thing to do on the pattern paper is to get my starting line which is also the shoulder line so after rolling that out I'll be measuring my neck width and depth which is 3 by 3 respectfully all measurements start from the shoulder that is that line please know that all our horizontal measurements are divided by 4 which is standard so after getting my neck measurement I connect the two points with a French cuff as you can see me doing right now so if you don't know what a horizontal measurement is i'll be linking the video that i did on how to get your body measurement to this video the next thing i'll be measuring on my pattern paper is the shoulder to shoulder measurement which is also known as the back it is always divided by two that is the standard and i'll mark it on my starting line so on that point i'll come down by one inch that is a shoulder slope this is because our shoulder is not straight it's kind of slant that is why we are coming down by one inch so i'm indicating the one inch on the tape measure as you can see me drain on the screen so i'll connect that point to the neck with to form that slope that we just talked about as you can see me doing with a with the straight side of a french curve so after that i'm going to show you how i got my calculation for my hair mold length so this calculation is your bust divided by 6 plus 1.5 bust divided by 6 plus 1.5 so whatever you get there will be measured so i got it so i'm going to measure that height now this calculation of the hair mold length is very standard you can use it for any bust measurement so i connect the points to the shoulder slope with a straight side of a french curve you can also use a normal straight ruler to connect so after that i had to retake my back measurement so as to get a straight line so if you are enjoying this video so far kindly like the video subscribe to the channel and turn on your notification bell so you can be the first to see my next video thank you so from my starting line to the line that i drew on the ham hole length is nine inches which i'm also trying to point out there so as to get a straight line so you can see that the ham hole l shape is coming out already so after that i measured what i have on the line um as you can see me doing on the screen i measured eight inches so i'm just going to get the half of it which is just like the midpoint of that line and that is four inches you can also fold your tape measure directly into two to get accurate measurements as you can see me doing on the screen so that is because sometimes you don't get a whole number e.g you get 8.5 you get 7.9 9.2 and so on like that so on that point i come in by half of an inch so after coming in by half of an inch i indicate a point and automatically that is just like that i've gotten my chest line so i'm just going to indicate my chest line using a straight a straight ruler so what i just did is to extend that line to the center front which is my chest line the next thing that i'm going to be doing on my pattern paper is to take my vertical measurements so i'm starting from the shoulder that is all measurements start from the shoulder so my i'm taking my shoulder to the boss point and i'm just squaring the points with a straight ruler so i indicate that line so that you can know that that is my boss point always label your pattern paper so as not to get confused so my boss point is nine inches the next i'm going to take now is my front half length which is 18 inches so i'm just going to indicate the lines i measured it like in two to three places so as to get a straight line so as you can see me doing labeling your patterns are very very important so i'm just going to assume the down part of this pattern paper to be the blouse length which is 23 and i just ruled it out then i labeled it 
as blouse length so back to my chest line i'll measure my bust i'll mark the point and my my own bust measurement is 40 which i divided by 4 and i'm getting 10 that is quarter of my bust i mark it on my chest line 10 so after doing that i go to my front half length and that is where i'm going to measure my waist so the quarter of my waist is 8.5 inches and i'm going to mark that on my front half length please note the back half length measurement is different from the front half length measurement so after getting my front half measurement which is 8.5 i'll put my dart allowance which is 1.5 i like putting 1.5 as my dart allowance you can put one you can put two but 1.5 is just the best for me that's what i use and then i moved to my blouse length on this blouse length i measured my hip any measurement you want to measure that is below your half length you use your hip measurement so that when you wear it you can it can pass through your waist down to the hip so my hip measurement is 40 that is the quarter of 40 is 10 so i'm going to mark that 10 so i'll be moving to the upper part of our pattern and i'm going to connect three lines together which is my bust the point that i made on my bust the point that i made on the half length and the point that i made on the blouse length which is my bust my waist and my hip i'm going to be connecting them together don't forget to like this video comment drop your comments i'm willing to answer all your questions so i'm going to the upper part of our pattern i'm going to connect my shoulder slow to that half inch will come in then to my bust uh, measurements but i'm going to use a straight ruler as you can see me doing on the screen i'm going to use a straight ruler to join the slope and the half that we came in i'm going to use a straight ruler to join them together so afterwards and i'll use my armhole curve to join that half that we came in with my bust as you can see the way i'm placing my armhole curve if you don't have armhole curve don't worry you can use a broom just tilt the broom and use it to form this shape that you can see me doing so now back to the front half length which is where i placed my waist measurement remember in our me body measurements we measured our bust pan that is the distance between one nipple to the other mine is eight so i'm going to divide it by two that will give me four so i'll go to my half length and i'll mark that four i'm going to mark that four on the front half length on the bust point and on the blouse length so now i'll be connecting the three lines together that is the three dots i'll be connecting the bust point to the front half length then to the blouse length so now to the front half length which is where i place that a uh, line the nipple to nipple line i'm going to be taking the dart on both sides remember i added 1.5 inches to for my dart allowance and i'm going to divide that 1.5 inches into two and i got 0 0.75 inch so i'm going to mark that 0 0.75 inch on both sides of the dart leg that is on the front half length so after taking 0 0.5 on both sides if i measure it all together i'll be getting my initial dart measurement which is 1.5 inches so 
if you are on the small size you can take half inch on both sides which means your dart allowance will be one inch so still on the dart taken i'll go to my blouse length and i'll measure two inches upward your waist that is not supposed to get to your hip else so i measure two inches upward and mark it so then i connect those points together the bust point to the half length so it's just like a trapezium so as you can see me indicating on the screen that is how we are going to connect our lines together So moving forward to get our bust start, remember the back half length measurement is 15 while the front half length measurement is 18 inches. So we are just going to find the difference between both and work on that difference. So mine is 18 minus 15 which gives me 3. If your own front measurement is 17 and your back measurement is 16 that means your difference will be 1 inch. So now the 3 inches that I got as a difference, I'm going to place it on my bust point as shown in the video. So I'll connect that point to the dart leg on the bust point as shown on the screen. And then I'll divide the 3 inches into 2 just to know what it is and after dividing my three inches into two i got 1.5 you can as well fold your tape measure into two to get accurate readings so that 1.5 i'm going to mark it on my sideline as shown and then i'll be connecting that line to the same bust point i'll make sure to extend that line by 1.5 inches that is the same half 1.5 inches that i got i will still extend that middle line with that same 1.5 inches which is what i'm doing right now So the next thing I do is to reconstruct that side line. So my line, new line will come from my bust to that half middle line that we measured. The one we extended to the front as you can see in the video. And I will use my um, French curve to, can, you can see the way I place my French curve then I will just connect that to my blast length. And that is all for our uh, waist that and bust that. So I'll come to the hem of my blouse length and I'll mark one inch upward. You can mark two inches, you can mark three inches. Then I connect that point to somewhere around the dart leg. This process gives the blouse a nice shape and fitting. So by doing this, the down part of the pattern of blouse won't be too sharp. So the last thing we are going to do on this front basic bodies is called tightening of the shoulder or shoulder tightening. So on the shoulder slope, come down by half inch, which is 0.5 inch, and on the neck width region, come down by 0.25 inch, that is one quarter inch. So connect the lines together. This will be your new shoulder line. Don't worry, this process won't reduce the length of the pattern. It won't reduce the length of your dress. So it will only make your dress more fitted on that shoulder region so now let's cut our pattern out
so i'm going to open the side dart with a scissors i'll stop cutting at the dart on the bust point line then fold it in so after holding both sides of the side dart with a paper tape you can see the bust effect that is coming out so taking this side that is very important now we would be drafting the basic bodies pattern for the back first i got my starting line that is the shoulder line then i measured my half length and my blouse length the neck depth is one inch while the width is three remember we also use three inches for the front neck width so whatever inch you use for back width must be used for the neck width for the front so that the shoulders can align when you are cutting your fabric so on my shoulder line that is my starting line i measured my neck width as three and i used one for my neck depth that is for the back don't forget we are drafting for the back then i connect those two points with my french curve so then i measured my back that is my shoulder to shoulder measurement which is eight inches then i find the shoulder slope by coming down by one inch and connect that point to the neck width then I find my armhole length. We are still using the same armhole length as the front. So the armhole length is 8 inches. Can you see? Still remember how we calculated our armhole length? So I look for the midpoint which is 4 inches, then I come in by 0 0.5 inches. It is not only on your front basic body pattern that you come in by 0 0.5 inches, you also come in on the back. So then I place my bust measurements on my chest line which is cut out of my bust. My bust is 40 so the cut out is 10 inches. So then on my back half length, I measure my, my waist, which is 8.5 inches. That is quarter of my waist. That's 8.5 inches. And I go to my blouse length. I measure the quarter of my hip, which is 10 inches. So lest I forget, before we connect, we are adding our that allowance too on uh, waist measurements so my base measurement is 8.5 so i'm going to add my 1.5 inch allowance that allowance that allowance to it remember we added same 1.5 that allowance to the front body pattern so that will, whatever you had for the front you must have for the back so then i connect the three lines together with a straight side of my French curve as you can see me doing right now so now I'm on my blouse length I'm coming up by one inch as I did for the front basic body pattern so I'm just going to connect it with my French curve So going up to the shoulder, I connect my armhole using my armhole cuff, just like I did for the front basic body pattern. So I take my dart on the back waist measurement. So I use my nipple to nipple measurement, which is the boss pan that's mine is eight eight divided by two that's four so i measured four inches on my back half length 
then I measure four inches to on my blouse length then I move to my chest line and I extend that chest line backward so I can also take my dart on it but I'm not going to take my dart exactly on my chest line I am coming down by one inch from the chest line please don't make the mistake of taking your dart exactly on the chest line because it's going to affect your bust measurement so after coming down by one inch from the chest line then I take my bust band measurement on it which is four inches then I connect the lines together Then remember the 1.5 inches we added as our dart allowance. So I'm going to divide it by 2, which will give me 0.75. And I'm going to take it on both sides of the dart leg on the waist. Okay, so on my blouse length, I come up both by 2 inches. Remember, uh, that is not supposed to start from the blouse length because it might affect our uh, hip measurement. So then I connect these three lines. Okay guys, so to the shoulder tightening now, I'll come down by 0.25, that is one quarter of an inch on the neck width only. So after measuring my 0.25, I mark the point, then I connect it to the shoulder slope. Remember I said this won't change the length of the pattern or blouse you make with this pattern. okay so as you can see right now after taking the side that on the front basic pattern the side matches with the back pattern can you see so if i decide to take the tape that i used to join the front side that together you can see that the front panel is longer than the back so which is why our side dart is very important to take. 